first of all, have you uh, just heard that have your hand shot? You mean? No, I wasn't surprised. You know, when I was young, I was bartending, so it's. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but what occurred to you just to, to try that shot instead of. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. I had a good feeling it was going to happen. I think it was one second in the club. I think so. Right, but I mean, you could have attempted maybe a. a you may have shot in that situation. Uh, I don't know. You know, those are the shots I like. So. Look, look, you guys have won 11 in the last 12. What have you noticed about the way you've been able to play these last 12 games? I think our difference is our energy. Uh, they've been at the high level for most of those games. And we stay together all the time. So even when teams make run, we stay together, and that's the most important thing. And now it just seemed like the, the shots were just going in tonight. Just talk about the way you guys were able to play on the offense again. Yeah, I mean, we just we're aggressive, I think. You know, they switched, uh, so I think we kind of went to work, uh, and everybody, everybody else was open, so we had to knock those shots down with about 24 threes, and we almost to open three, so we do it, we knock them down. About three weeks ago, I asked if you thought that this was your best season, and you said you thought it was. In what way do you think it's been better? I mean, when, you, when you're out there, in what ways do you feel like you're better than you? Uh, I think a lot of things. Uh, I think the most important is maturity. Uh, you know, I've been with it for five years now, so uh, just understanding the game, uh, learning the game, and just maturity. Uh, it's about having to from both ends. Uh, I've been better this season, so I just got to keep going like that. Do you feel like you're playing MVP worthy? Well, that's the question for you guys. <laughs> I'm not worried. <laughs> Luca, when uh, you have your step back going the way it has been recently and all year, honestly, are you a, a bit surprised when you see as much switching out there, especially with bigs? Uh, no, uh, I'm surprised when they double me because you know, uh, I usually make the right read, so then it's falling to the basketball with a lot of space. Uh, so when they double me, you know, there's uh, chances for everybody to get involved. And that's what we did in stack. Uh, so I think I'm more surprised now when they double me. Kind of a crazy road trip. You know, already had two games in Sacramento, and now you got to go back to Northern California again. I'm very excited about that. No, I <laughs> just went 30 minutes flight home. <laughs> Four hours flight. Yeah. I miss home now. It hasn't been the longest road trip ever. Mm -hmm. 12 days, I think it is. Good. Yeah. The Sacramento used much different defensive strategies than the Rockets tonight with blitzing more and late doubles. What are your thoughts on how the group has handled those different styles after having you know quite a few games since the trade deadline? I think it's better. We play better when they double me. Uh, like I said, you know, it's it's open space, uh, four and three basketball. Uh, and you got Kai on the other side too, so I think we play better when they double me. You know, everybody gets involved. It's easier for, for us in offense. And then what has helped sustain your three-point percentage to this point in the season? You're shooting at a very high clip uh, this late. Yeah, uh, just getting working. Uh, my legs has been way better than the best things. So it's all about the, the legs. You know, right? Talk about your defense a little bit. You had two steals there. Yeah. Most of the, most of the team. <laughs> <It's all about. laughs> I don't care. Still hold the. Uh, I think your 21 footer was still better than Luca's 21 footer. <laughs> but what do you think of Luca's 21 footer? Man, I was running back my defense, shaking my head, man. That's <laughs> that's how you know you're having fun with the game and you're just having a, a great night. So it, we've seen him hit some un, you know ridiculous shots before. I mean, he hit like this crazy trick shot before the game. He's been trying for the last like 10 games, <laughs> trying to get that shot to go in. So. It was going to be one of those nights for sure once he hits those. And, um, really proud of him that he kept staying aggressive. And, I mean, he's having fun, and that's what you want when you're playing out there with somebody special. What's going on through your mind, Kyrie, when he comes out of the gate playing the way he's playing 22 points there in the first quarter? I love it. I love it. It makes all of us lock in a little bit more and um, just be complimentary. I think uh, one thing that uh, 
I've learned is being on very special teams, great teams. Right? You've got to be able to play every role. So when somebody's the scorer for five straight minutes, keep feeding that good energy, that positive reinforcement, and you just play defense and um, enjoy doing the little things for um, you know someone to get it back on the offensive end because when he's being that efficient, he's being that aggressive, um, it'll open up more opportunities for us. So just got to be ready to play every role when someone's got to go on like that. It could be anyone's night, and um, I think you've seen that over our winning streak. It just you know, Luca gets it going, and someone else gets it going, and uh, we have another third or fourth score coming in. And I think that's how we're uh, creating separation in these games. Anything in particular you've noticed about the way the team got played these last four games? You said what? Anything in particular you've noticed about the way this team has played the last four games? You know, we won the last four games. Uh, I mean, we're just not satisfied. I think again, we know where we are positioning wise, and we know what we're fighting for. So we just want to continue to put our best foot forward, game to game, and take it one minute at a time. And, that's all we can do. Kyrie, um, coming into this game, I just wanted to know your thoughts on what have, what have you thought about watching the um, the emergence of Jalen Green, you know, coming into this game, it seemed like he was really starting to come into his own and stuff. I've been a huge supporter of, of Jalen since he was in high school. I've been watching a lot of his highlights on YouTube. Um, you know, seeing his maturity, seeing his ascension, really, as a young leader in our league and uh, him answering all the naysayers, right, or him answering his own calls or him rising up to his, his potential that we thought he was going to be at. Um, you know, just even when he first came into the league, just a, a premier scorer, able to uh, get his team wins and uh, play through contact and also do it consistently night after night. Um, those are what the special players, the greatest players do. They do it every single night. And um, He didn't shoot particularly well tonight. I mean, we had a defense baked in for him, so when you're having that, uh, type of stretch, we're going to uh, make it a little bit tougher on you. So I know he's going to go home and think about it, but I think the maturity that he's shown over these past you know, two months or so uh, has been tremendous, and I'm nothing, nothing short of proud of him as a, as a big brother. Hey, Kyrie, I want to uh, commend you for your ability to be vocal and your dedication to the progress of black people in America. Mm -hmm. And with that said, um, in your opinion, what do you think is the role of like today's black athlete when it comes to like social justice, freedom, and uh, equality? Uh, I think the most important thing is learning what a, what a, a true superpower reading is and uh, being aware of what your ancestors did before you and reclaiming that power. Um, I think the modern day athlete is not just an athlete anymore by title. Uh, I think you have to be more, you have to do more, you have to be socially aware, you have to be racially aware, uh, and you also have to be politically aware of uh, the society that we're in. And, also how you make change on those different levels. Um, so I think it starts with our education. Um, you know, I think we kind of need to move away from just this coin phrase of financial literacy is going to liberate us. Um, you know, we have people in the world that are black or African American or Afro American or Moorish or, you know, we have so many different identities that we go by. Um, I think once you kind of hone in on the message that I'm trying to get across, which is we just need more unity and we need to consistently sustain that unity. And we have the power inside of us, but I, I think we need to walk with grace and um, be ready to act. It's, it's been a war on skin color for a long time. So um, just being aware of that and seeing how you can galvanize others to um, not necessarily believe what you believe, but um, be willing to challenge your belief system and also encourage you to learn more and be more. Uh, so I think I have a responsibility of not only being of um, you know, African descendants or indigenous descendants having ancestors that have fought in wars, um, genocides, um, you know, and, and strive for me to even be in this position today. I don't take it for granted. So, you know, I know that was a long-winded answer, but um, it, it needs to be long-winded um, because right now we need to have these uh, these conversations around race comfortably and civilly. We can do that. So I can do it. I'm at peace with myself and I'm at peace with other races and other walks of life, other religions. So um, when we can have a civil conversation about how we move forward in our world, I think you'll see more things change and more people speaking about it. Before, before the game, uh, Coach Yudoka said you were the best player, one on one player, most skillful player he's ever seen, been around a coach. What do you say to that? I'm appreciative of those compliments and I honor those compliments. And, I'll say this as well. I'm appreciative of everyone's most skilled compliments, uh, but that's not the reason why I picked up the basketball. Um, I, I didn't pick up the basketball to be the one best one-on-one -on -one player of all time, or to be labeled as the most skilled. I just want to be known as a, as a great winner, one of those guys that came through our league and left an impact and did it his own way, but also did it with some special teammates. And 
um, truly was just inspiration of my approach and how I woke up every single day and worked towards my craft and uh, just set an example for not only athletes but for people around the world to follow my footsteps, you know, to make mistakes in the public forum and learn from them and mature as a young man. And, you know, it's not easy being a child prodigy growing up in America. Um, you know, people expect you to be more mature than what you are. So, um, you know, I'm appreciative. Again, I, I want to answer your question. I'm appreciative of Amy's comments, but I also want to kind of relate a message to the rest of the world. That, um, you know, the most skilled just save those compliments for after I'm done. And I never want to discredit the people who came before me. There were some bad MFers that came before me before you start saying I'm the most skilled. Again, I respect everyone's compliments, but don't don't put me in that conversation until you really get to know NBA history and who's coming for me and guys that have scored gazillions of points and assists and rebounds and made a true impact. I, I just want to fall in alignment with that and just continue to pass the game on the next generation. Speaking of that, Kyrie, you said, I think it was uh, when you were in Brooklyn, you were talking about how you talked to Jay and how you talked to KPJ at that time about leaving a legacy. It's, felt the responsibility to make sure that you left something so those guys can pick up and come behind behind you. Have you seen that with Jalen here and like with Anthony Edwards up in Minnesota? Yeah, for sure. I, I'm, I'm in that uh, kind of middle of the age sort of thing, like in the league where I'm well respected by my younger peers. They've watched me when they were when they were little, uh, you know, younger kids in high school or middle school. Um, and now I'm, I'm kind of becoming that, that elder statesman. You know, you're going to see like Bron, Steph, Katie, those guys who are going to eventually ascend out. And then it's going to be me and a few guys left in my generation that are going to be the 30 year olds. And, um, you know, we just want to set a great example um, for us knowing the history. You know, that was the most important thing for me is when I came into the NBA is knowing the history. Uh, so once you know the history, then you kind of take some of the pressure off your back. And it's not just to perform well for the fans, perform well for organizations. It's, it's about how you put your family in a different position and then you have a band of brothers that you compete against, you know, seven months to nine months out of the year and then we go at it for a championship and then we go to the summer and then we come back at it. That's a simple formula. Every external thing that comes with this is, is pretty much extra fluff on it. You know, it makes the theatrics fun, it makes the, the business even more profitable. So social media aspect, but um I always want to tell my peers just to take it one day at a time and don't listen to you know anyone that hasn't necessarily tried to understand the position that you're in and um, take advice from people that are going to take their own advice. So I think Jalen and you know these guys are taking their own advice but also willing to listen and um, you can see they're rewarding themselves from it. Thanks. Why do you think you guys were uh, so uh, quick to jump on Jalen uh, obviously, you know, he's been having great games lately, so we try to take him on the game early and uh, make it hard for him and uh, make somebody else beat it. So, um, every time he came off the pick and roll, we just want to be aggressive with him and get the ball in his hands. When look at has it going like that, DJ, what goes on your mind when you're watching all that magic he's doing out there? This is magic. I mean, I just, I mean, I just enjoy him being himself out there and just going out there and dominating each and every night. So it's special to watch, and um, obviously playing with a player like that is special. So I mean, it's exciting for me too, um, and I hope he does it again next game too. So for sure. I can't remember if you were on the court or on the bench when he made the underhand. No, I was on the court when I seen it. I've, I've never seen anything like that in <laughs> NBA game ever. So just the fact that he's doing stuff like that is crazy to me. So it just shows how easy the game is for him. And, like I said, I'm just glad I'm on this team today, so. Is it like a game of horse or something like that for him? I don't know. I mean, whatever game it is, I feel like he's always winning, so. <laughs> I'm just glad uh, we got a dub tonight. I'm glad everybody hit shots and played well on the defense of him. And uh, we start the game playing. We got a good, a good win tonight. You got it. You got the one left on your last well, uh, When you got it going like this, can you pinpoint one reason why you got it going like this? Um, I just feel like we're there for each other. We're connected on both ends of the floor. Uh, no matter if the guys miss the shots, we're um, telling them to keep shooting. And we're there for each other. Um, no matter what, I feel like this, this team is going to gel together. And uh, we're on a good uh, path right now. And uh, we're just taking everything one game at a time. How much personal satisfaction do you take in uh, walking down there in this court? Uh, a lot. I mean, that's my job to come out here and get stopped. So. I take a lot of uh, pride in that, and I'm just excited to come out here and show uh, how I can guard defensively.
Over the past few weeks, the defense as a team has improved uh, substantially. What are the key areas that have improved, in your opinion? Uh, just physicality, um, rebounding, and uh, just being in the right spots. I feel like um, and being able to talk on that in as well is, is important. So I feel like we're doing a great job of that right now, and everybody's connected down there. And obviously, uh, Gap and Lock have been great, uh, blocking stuff at the rim. So. Um, Kind of a crazy look for the Missouri and all the California guys. Yeah, I'm pretty mad about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to get on this flight, but that's okay with it. So, <laughs> thank you, bro. Thank you. Describe what Luca was able to do, particularly in that first quarter to get you guys off to a great start. Yeah, I think um, you know, on this road trip, he's been setting the tone early. Um, and as a leader, um, he came out. Set the tone offensively, um, but I thought not just Luca, but the group um, was ready. You know, to come in. Houston's playing at a high level. They've won eleven in a row. So the test was so Luca got us off to this start offensively. But our defense, um, I thought the guys executed the defense uh, to, to the team tonight, and making sure the ball found the other guys. You know, we knew that Green was playing at a high level, so we tried to just. You know, keep it tough on him, knowing that he can make tough shots. But uh, Luca, again, was Luca. What did you see on that one underhanded shot from the shot side of Troy? Well, we've been lucky enough to be around him for three years, and we've seen him kick the ball in. Uh, we've seen him shoot from half court, full court, sitting in a chair. So um, to see him do that, I don't know. If, I think a lot of people. I decided, but I think at the same time, I regard that's Luca. You know, he's always uh, able to make tough shots. Um, again, Picasso, when you give him a paintbrush, he's going to do something special, and that shot was really special. The way he controlled the game in the first quarter, I mean, I was watching and I thought this could be his MVP highlight right now. Just the way he dominated the pass. Yeah, I, I think when you talk about the um, best player in the world, uh, understanding the, the time and where we are on the schedule on this road trip, he came out and showed why he's one of the best in the world. Uh, he, he set the tone offensively. His voice, uh, you, you can hear his voice. Um, and then, you know, finding his teammates. But uh, again, he, 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 can, he can put the ball in the basket and they're going to red and play the defense that we saw tonight. It's up to him. To do his job, he did that at a high level tonight. And it wasn't just Luca. I mean, you got twenty four off Kyrie. Just talk about his contribution. Yeah, Kai. Again, the chemistry of playing off of one another. One is going, the other one is just uh, hovering uh, to wait his turn. And, and Kai, I thought, did a great job there in the second half, uh, being able to play the one on one and being able to, to score. Uh, when those two don't see double teams. I think they'll, you know, Kai and Luca take advantage of that, and uh, Kai did that tonight. Um, being that in the second half, um, to be able to, you know, get to the basket or take the three in rhythm. But again, that's that's what they've been doing here of late is playing off of one another. And Kai is playing at a high level. Uh, but I know he's not going to just talk about offense, but his defense. I thought was at a high level t tonight. Um, being able to ball pressure. Being able to get deflections uh, and, and being able to be in the right place at the right time. I thought all five of those guys did a great job. And I'm talking about the starters and to set the tone defensively. Physicality was at a high, knowing that Houston's going to scrap their small. So I, I thought, again, our players did a good job. 4 0 on this road trip, which was not an easy road trip to begin with, and with one more difficult leg. What is it? Tell you about you know this team's ability to kind of this point. Yeah, I think uh, to that point we validated uh, the Sacramento trip with this win, um, and then if you look at Utah, we validated that one with the Sacramento game. So now we go back to California where we just left and uh, they play Golden State uh, again. Golden State is fighting um, for a playoff uh, spot, so um, they're playing well. Been in this situation, and so it's be a good test for us on Tuesday. Um, being our last game, we can't look forward to going home. We, we got to be pros and continue to uh, understand where we stand and what we're fighting for. Coach, you didn't see too much blitzing tonight, but when teams do blitz, 
How do you feel like you guys have handled in the pocket and making plays on the short goal? Yeah, our bigs have been great all season. We've seen the advantage basketball. Um, Gafford, if he's not finishing on the rim, um, D Live or Gaff not finishing at the rim, those guys have been great at being able to find uh, the corners or the slots. Just understanding the, the, the preparation of uh, the rotations that uh, those guys have watched a lot of film and understand what's coming. And so I think they've done an incredible job knowing that Luke and Kyrie are going to get double teamed. Is that a benefit of having Kyrie as a screener in some instances where, you know, it's hard to, it's hard when a, a big is making those plays, but when a point guard like Kyrie is making moments. Later. Yeah, you know, I think we've used Kyrie in that situation. We, we try to use uh, everyone so that they can understand um, that the situation, the feeling of being able to roll that we're not just one dimension. A lot of times in the double team, we don't want to put Kai in that situation because we know they're not going to leave. So that just makes the man's basketball a little bit easier for us. Uh, with PJ, with uh, Pete Jones, uh, and others. But uh, again, when Gaff catches it in the paint, his job is to go score first, and he did that tonight. When you guys see Jalen Green, as hot as he was coming into this game, you players just accept that challenge. They're going to go out there and shut it down. Yeah, the team accepted that challenge. He's, he's playing at a very high level. Uh, we we'll try to throw as many bodies and different schemes at him just to keep him off the uh, off rhythm. Uh, he's a guy who can make tough shots. Uh, and he was playing. I mean, he was averaging 37 a night. So uh, for our group to to hold him to 12, uh, you know, that tip you had, the guys really were uh, focused and locked in on what they had to do tonight. You guys are not tired for the fifth spot. Boys, just keep it going. Yeah, we have no choice. Um, we have to finish this until the end of the season and then we'll figure out where we are in the series. Appreciate it.